welcome back children in the last few classes you learned about the primary source of data secondary source of data then you learned about the qualities of a good questionnaire and pilot survey now we are going to learn about the methods of collecting data so how we collect the data by using the questionnaire it is a way in which you collect the data by preparing the questions but now we are going to learn the methods of collecting data which are the different methods from which you collect the data so the today's topic is mode of data collection or methods of data collection there are three basic methods of collecting data they are personal interview telephone interview and mailing the questionnaire this is especially with regard to posting by postal services so the three methods of collecting data are personal interview telephone interview and mailing the questionnaire these are the three basic methods through which you can collect the data now let us first move on to personal interview what is this personal interview personal interview is a face to face interaction it is a face to face interview personal interview is a face to face interview or face to face interaction now let us see what are the features of the face to face interview the first feature is interviewer has the opportunity of explaining the study and answering the queries of respondents or interviewee respondents are interviewees now in the personal interview an example which i can give you you might have noticed the people uh, coming to take census at home once in 10 years census is collected so for uh, taking the census they may come to your house and they will ask questions to you it is a face to face interaction so personal interview refers to face to face interaction the interviewer and the interviewee will be sitting in a particular place and the interview is conducted interviewer will ask questions to interviewee and interviewee will respond to the questions asked by interviewer now certain features of this personal interview the first feature what i told you was interviewer has the opportunity of explaining the study now the interviewer can say this is the purpose of my study so i expect you to answer the questions which are given in the questionnaire so he can explain the nature of his study for what purpose he is conducting the study and answering the queries of respondents or interviewee while asking the questions the interviewee may have some doubts that those doubts can be cleared by the interviewer so in the person interview as it is a face to face interaction the interviewer can explain the purpose of his study and clear all the and can clear all the queries or doubts of and answer the queries of the respondents or the interviewee now the next feature of person interview is the interviewer can request the interviewee to expand on answers that are particularly important now if it is a face to face interaction the interviewer can request the interviewee to give the answers in an explanatory manner for certain questions which is considered to be important so interviewer has the freedom to request the interviewee as it is a face to face interaction interviewer can ask the interviewee to give answer in an explanatory manner for some questions which are considered to be important now the next feature of the personal interview is that the interviewer can watch the reactions of the interviewee while answering the questions as it is a face to face interaction the interviewer can watch the facial expressions of interviewee while he or she is answering some questions some with some questions interviewee may not be comfortable 
So, the interviewer can watch the reactions on the interviewee's face while he or she is asking the question. If the interviewee finds to be too difficult, finds too difficult to answer that question, interviewer can ignore or he can just twist that question and ask in a different way. This is an important feature of personal interview. Now, the next one is more clarification of answers are possible. In some cases, the answers given by the interviewee may not be clear to an interviewer. In such situation, interviewer can ask the interviewee to make it clarified or he will get a correct explanation of the answer given by interviewee. Otherwise, if the correct information or if the answers are not clear to the interviewer, it can affect his study. Now, next is direct information is collected by meeting the interviewee. It is a face to face interaction. So, direct information can be collected by an interviewer from an interviewee, which is more clear and precise and which will be a first hand information, which will be more effective than any other methods of interview. So, personal interview is a face to face interaction. There, the interviewer can ask the interviewee to explain those answers which are not clear. He can ask the interviewee to give the answers in an explanatory manner. He is collecting the information directly from interviewee. So, these are the important features of personal interview. Now, this personal interview has got some difficulties. Let us see what is that. It is a very expensive method. Why is it is said it is a very expensive method? The reason is long distance of journey. If it is a long distance of journey, the fuel consumption, the money which is required to travel, all these matters. It is a very expensive method and another thing is that well-trained personalities are required, well-trained interviewers are required for this purpose. Therefore, it is very expensive method because they have to be paid for that. So, it is a very expensive method. So, personal interview is a very expensive method and long distance of journey can also make so many difficulties. Next difficulties, it is time consuming. Definitely, it is time consuming. As it is a face-to-face -face interaction, the interviewer has to travel to the interviewee's place, the time taken for the journey and when they meet face-to-face, -face, when they answer the questions in an explanatory manner with an interaction process, too much of time will be consumed. So, it is time consuming method because here the interviewer is getting more freedom to ask questions to the interviewee. In some cases, the interviewee may not be free on a particular time that the interviewer is asking. Therefore, he should wait for his turn. So, all those creates problems. Therefore, time consuming is the most important problem of personal interview. Next comes, sometimes interviewee may not reveal the whole opinion in the presence of interviewer as it is a face to face interaction. Interviewee may not be comfortable to answer some questions or to give his opinion in a correct way because it is a face to face interaction. Therefore, he may hide some fact or information because in the presence of interviewer, interviewee may not be comfortable to answer. So, those difficulties are present in personal interview. Other than this, personal interview is a very effective method of collecting data. So, we have finished with the first method of collecting the data, personal interview. Now, we will move on to the next method that is telephone interview. So, from the name itself, it is very clear, isn't it? Asking questions over phone is the telephone interview. We can ask questions over the phone. That type of an interview is known as telephone interview. Now, what are the features of telephone interview? They are cheaper. Here, there is no need of traveling. An interviewer uh, need not travel a long distance and he need not wait long. So, that 
difficulty can be avoided with telephone interview therefore it is it is a cheaper method of conducting the interview next is interview can be conducted in short time therefore it is time saving as it is through phone it is not time consuming the interviewer will ask the question interviewee will give the answer so if it is a face to face interaction lot of time will be taken but if it is a telephone interview the interviewer interviewee will respond to interviewer's question and suddenly the questioner can be finished off very faster then next is better in those cases where interviewees are reluctant to give the answer in the presence of interviewers just as i told even I explained about the difficulty of person interview some questions the interviewee may not be comfortable to answer in the presence of interviewer those kind of questions can be answered very well through a telephone interview because the interviewer and interview is not having a face to face interaction he is giving the answer over the phone therefore the interviewee may find comfortable to give answer for certain questions because there is no presence of interviewer in front of him so over the phone he will be comfortable to answer the questions now difficulties what are the difficulties of telephone interview in certain remote areas the network connection is very poor therefore in those cases you will get a reply network is busy isn't it so therefore the poor network connection in remote areas may cause difficulties in the case of telephone interview and the next difficulty is people may not be on phone always they may not carry the phone always some people may not have the habit of carrying the phone with them every time therefore in such cases interviewer will find it very difficult to collect the information from interviewee so these are the difficulties associated with the telephone interview so we have finished with the second basic method of collecting the data that is telephone interview now we will move on to the third method that is mailing the questionnaire that means sending the questionnaire through postal service this is the one which i mean now today we can find nowadays online uh, questionnaires are also that is common nowadays right so we will move on to the next method of collecting the data that is mailing the questionnaire questionnaire here is sent by post with a request to complete on time you are requested to fill in the questionnaire and send it back on this date that is how we sent the questionnaire by postal services you will be giving this information to the interviewee because you need to get your data on time therefore you have to inform the interviewee that it has to be returned back on this particular date that is why i have written here questionnaire is sent by post with a request to complete on time okay features of mailing the questionnaire the first feature is this less expensive method because you just need to send it through postal services you need not travel or there is no much time required it is a very less expensive method next one is it helps to access the people in remote areas too you need to travel along so if you want to collect information from the people of remote areas you just need to send it through postal service you will get the information so it is applicable to the people of remote areas the next advantage is no influence of interviewee while answering if it is a face to face interaction or if it is a telephone interview if it is a face to face interaction interviewer can influence the interviewee in giving some answers in telephone interview it is not possible but to some extent it is possible but in mailing the questionnaire this kind of influencing of interviewer is not possible an interviewer cannot influence the interviewee in any cost here interviewee is answering the question by himself no influence sometimes with the influence of interviewer interviewee may change his option so that kind of possibility is not there in mailing the questionnaire 
Next advantage is sufficient time can be used by interviewee for answering the questions given in the questionnaire. Definitely. Now, if one week time is given for the interviewee to return the questionnaire back, he can use one week to think and answer the questions. So, sudden answering is not possible. So, the mistakes while answering the questions in a uh, while answering the questions uh, quickly. If you answer the questions quickly, mistakes will be common. If you are taking time to answer the questions, you can think and answer. So, in mailing the questionnaire, interviewer is giving a chance for the interviewee to think and answer. If it is one week time, interviewee is free to think and answer the questions. Therefore, mistakes can be avoided. So, that is one benefit which you get when you mail the questionnaire. So, the questionnaire, the interviewee can think and answer the questions. So, now, nowadays you can find online surveys are popular. This is with regard to the postal services. Now, why we need to send it through postal services? Because online facilities will not be available for all the people, especially in the remote areas. Therefore, we need to send it through postal services. That is why we are discussing mailing the questionnaire through postal services. Let us see the disadvantages. What are the disadvantages? The first disadvantage is less opportunity to provide assistance in clarifying the doubts on questions. Now here the interviewer and interviewee doesn't have any connection. There is no telephone interview, there is no face to face interaction. Therefore, if the interviewee has any doubts, the clarification of doubt seems to be very difficult here. Therefore, there is possibility of so many errors and low response. Why? Because some questions interviewee may not understand and there is no one else to explain that question. Doubts are not clarified. Therefore, some questions he can leave without answering. Some questions he may answer it without knowing the question properly. So, there may be errors. Next one, sometimes questionnaire will be returned without completing. That possibility is very high because I told you interviewee may not understand some questions. So, he may leave that question without answering. So, you may get an incomplete questionnaire. Incomplete questionnaire will create a problem for a research worker because he need to get information regarding all the questions. Next is some interviewees will not send back to the sent back the questionnaire on time after filling. The next problem some interviewees they will feel lazy to go to the post office and send it back. So, in such cases delay will happen. Now, a person who is conducting the research work, he will have to submit his work on time. So, lack of information creates so many difficulties. So, these are the features and difficulties associated with mailing the questionnaire. Thus, we have discussed all the three methods of collecting the data in detail. Now, let us see the merits and demerits of all these three methods in a nutshell. See that I have written here personal interview, its merits and demerits. Just have a quick uh, look of all these. Personal interview, high response rate you will get because it is a face to face interaction. It is better for open ended questions, right? If you are asking what is your opinion about globalization, the interviewee can explain, can answer the question in an explanatory manner that is possible only in a personal interview. Next, clarification of doubts is possible because an interviewer is with the interviewee. So, on the spot, clarification of doubts is possible. Allows the use of all types of questions, which means the interviewer can ask either open-ended questions or closed-ended questions. Both are possible. If it is a telephone interview or mailing the questionnaire, in a telephone interview, Explanatory questions, interviewee may not be interested to answer by phone. In mailing the questionnaire, he may not be interested to write a long essay on the question that you have asked. Therefore, person interview proves to be very successful for open-ended questions. Any type of questions you can ask, either closed-ended or open-ended questions. Now, demerits, it is a very expensive method as we have discussed 
time consuming possibility of influence face to face interaction is happening therefore interviewer can influence interviewee in giving answers for certain questions reluctant to answer at the same time interviewee may be reluctant to give answer for certain questions because of the presence of interviewer so these are the merits and demerits of telephone interview all those we have discussed i have written it in the form of a table differentiating it as merits and demerits now the next one telephone interview merits and demerits merits relatively low cost journey the travel expense can be avoided then less influence of interviewer in a telephone interview the interviewer cannot influence the interviewee but some cases interviewer can influence there is a possibility of that also which we will be discussing it in demerit but to some extent interviewer cannot influence the interviewee influence is more possible in personal interview now relatively good response rate as it is not a face to face interaction this is not a face to face interaction therefore the interviewee will be free to answer certain questions through telephone interview now let us see what are the demerits limited use in poor network areas the areas where there are poor network this is not practical reactions cannot be watched for certain questions while the interviewee is answering interviewer cannot notice or interviewer cannot watch the reactions of the interviewee then sometimes interviewer can influence the interview interviewee some interviewers are very smart they can influence the interviewee on the over the phone that depends on the ability of the interviewer in such cases the interviewee may not be answering the question according to his own opinion he is answering the question according to the interviewer so such kind of influence should not happen in an interview so in a telephone interview some sort of influence of interviewer can happen to the interviewee that depends on the ability of interviewer then comes mailing the questionnaire merits and demerits merits are only method to reach to the remote areas if you want to conduct an in, uh, if you want to collect an information in the remote areas this is the only method because it is too hectic to travel a long distance then no influence on interviewee here influence is totally absent because there is no connection between interviewer and interviewee and interviewee will be writing the opinion according to his own way then comes the next one maintains anonymity of respondents i told you there is no face to face interaction therefore it maintains the anonymity of the respondents no connection between these two and therefore interviewee is free to express his opinion for certain questions given in the questionnaire then comes it is best for sensitive questions if you ask some questions in a face to face interaction some questions which are very sensitive the interviewee may be reluctant to answer he will not answer such questions even if it is by face to face interaction or if it is by telephone interview but if it is in through writing he will express his views therefore for sensitive questions mailing questionnaire is very very good it proves to be a good one for sensitive questions there he need not answer the question in front of the interviewer or he need not answer over the phone he can express it in the form of a paper in writing next is demerits mailing questionnaire it cannot be used by illiterates if a person doesn't know how to read and write this proves to be a waste then comes reactions cannot be watched if the person is answering the question if interviewee is answering the question interviewer cannot watch the reactions then comes the next one cannot have clarification of doubts on certain questions the interviewee cannot clarify the doubts so if some questions he didn't understand he will just leave it out or he may give answers which are errors which can cause errors so these are the merits and demerits of mailing the questionnaire so i hope all the three methods of collecting the data is clear to you thank you